I'm telling you, man, today almost didn't happen. And it was supposed to happen yesterday. Welcome back to the Skill Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. It's episode 59 of What's on the Bench Weekly. not familiar with this show it's where I take you through projects that I'm working on and if you like those projects you should hit the like button or hit the dislike button it doesn't matter I don't think the algorithm matters birds aren't real <laughs> okay first on the bench today something that uh, uh, a lot of you have been asking for and uh, something that I've certainly been procrastinating on uh, and for no other reason other than there's always a new project but here is an old project that I'm very proud of it's not done yet, but it's getting closer, the CUCV. And uh, you can see that I've made a little bit of progress. It's now a different color other than primer. It's now NATO green, or a close approximation. Uh, but yes, uh, I have started working on finishing the CUCV. It's been a long time coming. Uh, I'm very happy to finally have some progress on it and something I can share that actually shows difference because usually it's just like, here it is, it's still in primer. Um, but yes, uh, I sprayed my first coat of uh, NATO green. Um, I used a really, actually it's really good paint. Uh, Vallejo does a spray can paint. Yep, good old chair. Uh, but here it is here, it's Vallejo hobby paint. Uh, this is not the color I was using, but um, this is the kind of cans it comes in. Uh, this is gray, <laughs> that's it, no. Nothing else to it. Um, but it does come, it's nice because it comes with two different spray caps too. Uh, one is a much more wider, expansive spray, and then the other one is a more fine, narrower spray. It's actually quite quite nice that they offer that. Um, and uh, this is for metal and plastic. It works on both. I'm really quite pleased with how it lays down. Uh, and you can see it's a nice even coverage over the whole truck. Um, these CUCVs, according to, pardon my noob, who has one in his driveway, it's a newer model than this one, um, everything underneath remains black. Uh, and then everything else gets green. So um, that's what we're going to be doing eventually. Uh, still need a lot of work on the interior. Uh, there are a bunch of things like the other set of wheels still have to be uh, mounted. This model uh, of wheel uh, from Long Tall Texan on Instagram uh, he did an absolutely beautiful job of modeling these. They are very accurate to the real thing. And once they get all detailed up with all the right hardware and everything, they look pretty spectacular on here. Uh, I'm really quite pleased with those. I might go down to a 155 and stretch it over the 19. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I kind of do like this look. It's not totally stock, but um, the height and width of these boom racing uh, road tracker tires actually do look pretty good on there so we're probably going to keep those um what else has happened oh yeah um i did the tailgate finally now it's got the chevrolet lettering on there which looks quite good uh this is all part of or did i do those i can't remember if that's part of the rex racer kit or not um i may have actually typed that up myself i think i did I don't think that's part of the kit, um, but definitely adds another nice touch of realism because that's how these were on this truck. Uh, the rear bumper looks great on there too. That's also from uh, Mod 19 or Rex Racer or whatever you want to call him. It's Jeff. His name's Jeff. There's a lot of detailing work. Uh, I still want to do lights. I want to do a little more work on the interior. I want to flesh that out a little bit. Um, there are some things missing from that interior, uh, but uh, we'll get there. We'll get there. I do, you know what? The resin printer, I gotta tell you, every time I do something in resin, I'm always really impressed. Like, darn, if that doesn't look fantastic. Uh, and I modeled that up myself. And that's a pretty close approximation of what's in one of these trucks. So I feel pretty good about that. Uh, yeah, so um, definitely need to do more work on this still, but it's definitely progressing. And it's starting to look like a thing. Oh, let me turn it around here and show you the uh, the front. I'm actually really quite pleased with how that has turned out. The brush bar is still the printed one that I did, uh, and now it's actually firmly mounted to the bumper. I think it looks really, really good. Obviously, it's not metal, so it's not going to be all that useful in real life, but um, that's fine. I don't think it needs to be. 
man, I'm really, really pleased with this one. I'm so happy that I, you know, just said, screw it. Start painting. You're ready for that. Uh, it is going to be a camo pattern. I will do the NATO pattern. Um, and uh, we'll get around to that soon. I usually, what I'll do in this case anyway, I did it the last time I did a camo pattern, is I actually found the proper NATO pattern online, printed out the sort of how it's supposed to go. I do have a, a diagram of where all the colors are supposed to go on this one already. Uh, and then I just mark out really loosely in pencil where I'm going to airbrush, and then I airbrush those colors on. It's a much more accurate way of doing it than just a spray can. <laughs> That would never work and would look terrible. So there you go, that's the CUCV, a work in progress, but man, some cool progress being made. It does look so good and it's so comically long. I really, really, really like this truck. Um, yeah, it's awesome. Can't wait for this one to be done. It might even be done in time for me to drive it with Pardon My Noob in November. Lofty goals, but I think it's possible. What do you think? Will I get it done? Or will something else tickle my fancy between now and then? Put a comment down below. You know I love reading through your feedback and I try to answer them as I can. Yeah, and the reason that uh, this show almost didn't happen today um, was there was a bit of a water leak at the old office. Had to go in with the shop vac and clean up two inches of water in the basement. It's a fun morning, but at least we have hobbies. <laughs> All right, cool. On to the next thing. Here's Dippy for the last time on the bench. I just wanted to share that I actually took it out and drove it on rocks uh, at my favorite location down at uh, Rattlesnake Point. Absolutely, hilariously awesome. This is a great little truck. I am so happy that I did this conversion. It works so well and is so much fun. Uh, it might actually be one of my favorite driving vehicles that I have in the collection. It's awesome. I cannot recommend this conversion kit enough. I was worried it was going to be too heavy uh, and it wouldn't perform very well, but it did really, really nicely on the rocks. And this little tiny sand scorcher body is just perfect uh, for everything. Like I actually, I would... <laughs> <laughs> I'm jinxing it already, but I would run this in competition. I really would. I just think it's that awesome. Of course, for comps, I would need a winch and I would want to put that servo on the chassis, but the Spare Time Hobbies kit allows for that. You just need uh, a rear link mount up front and then that's it. So I'm going to order myself one of those and we're going to change this thing up, CMS it, uh, and then see about running it in a comp because why not? It's so fun, it's so cute. It's got a nice big interior in it. It's got a driver figure that's animated and it's capable. It works really, really well. It's awesome. I highly recommend this by all means. Uh, if you can, uh, if you have a UTB 18 and um, you don't wanna use it in that format anymore and you want some more hard body points, make this conversion happen. It is fantastic. And here's also Shippy, uh, probably for the last time on the bench as well. I did take it out on its maiden run. It performed beautifully. I cannot be happier with this either. MJet did an amazing job of creating a very accessible print for a lot of people. You do not need a Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon. It doesn't hurt to have one, uh, but you can print this on any FDM style printer and uh, you will get the exact same results. Um, it's a blast. It was really fun on 3S. It was really, really fun on 4S. Uh, battery times for the size of the batteries I was running, not the longest. I will say that um, it could probably use a bit more battery, um, but uh, yeah, this is just amazing. And despite the fact that uh, it doesn't have like a bilge pump or anything, I didn't actually have a lot of water ingress into the actual uh, inside of the boat. So um, it's a great design. It works very well and uh, plenty of power. Nothing broke. Uh, the only scary moment was when it gets to a uh, lipo cutoff, it just kind of cuts. And because it's a jet boat, there's no steering without throttle. So it was kind of going in the opposite direction of shore. And I freaked out a little bit, 
but uh, luckily that cutout is just a warning cutout. So it says, okay, your battery's dead or close to it, you better come back. It gives you enough battery life to get back. Pretty amazing uh, machine, highly recommend it. Uh, seems, I guess, uh, K-pop's already working on MJet's next print, which is a jet ski. So that could be kind of cool as well. Maybe, uh, maybe next spring I'll print one of those too. But yeah, I'm, I'm hooked. Boating is fun. <laughs> Not something I thought I'd ever say. Okay, on to the next thing. And uh, if this wasn't a labor of love, I don't know what is. Here's my 911 uh, RWB Porsche. This is the Pandora RC from Japan. Uh, this is their body. And uh, lovingly detailed by yours truly. Uh, I spent a buttload of time on this. Uh, three, almost four days on a Lexan body, which seems like a lot. But uh, when you see the results here, uh, I think they speak for themselves. I'm very, very pleased with how this looks. So much so that I'm not going to probably end up driving it. <laughs> In fact, these aren't even drift tires on here anymore. These are just um, road tires. But uh, a lot of effort went into this and I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I've got a complete build video of every single step of creating this body uh, that I'm going to share with you at a later date. Um, there were a lot of details, a lot of little bits and pieces, uh, and um, a lot of hard work put into it and I think it deserves its own video uh, because uh, I really want to share all the steps with you. So there it is, uh, a few things that aren't part of the kit, um, the headlight washers, windshield washers, uh, wiper, um, what else? Wheels and tires obviously aren't part of this, um, an exhaust, I did an exhaust, a uh, set of exhaust tips on the back here. Um, this isn't glued on here yet, so it doesn't, doesn't really stay very well, but you can see I put some exhaust tips on there. That's just styrene that I coped to the ends of the tubes with some heat. Um, any uh, thing that was a sticker for mesh, I've been I've actually replaced that with real mesh. Um, the whole wing assembly uh, is resin, uh, and I, I painted that to match. I uh, got the RWB sticker cut out really carefully and put that on the back too. And you can see there is a faux engine in there as well. That is all Lexan. Uh, I just painted it on the outside and then dry brushed it to really knock the details out. But I think it turned out pretty darn good. Um, a few other little minor things. I did create uh, my own um, idlers uh, masks for the tires uh, because that is um, Nakai-san's uh, tire brand. He sprays every single tire with that, so I wanted to kind of replicate that myself, which I think that turned out pretty good. I cut that on the Cricut. Uh, and I also did the front, uh, the Zweite Entwicklung, which means uh, second development. Uh, it's another thing that he sprays on every car as well. It's usually on the front, uh, right along the, uh, the lip there, which I think that turned out pretty good right down there. Uh, and added a tow hook as well, just to kind of complete the look. But uh, yeah, once I get this actually mounted to this chassis with the proper magnet mounts, uh, I'll probably share that final video with you. Uh, so stay tuned for that. All right, I think that's gonna do it. Um, I'm really kind of pleased with some of the progress I've been making lately. It feels like I've actually had some good time in the hobby room and uh, cool things are happening, so feel pretty good about everything lately. Uh, I hope you're enjoying this show, of course. Do all the things, and we'll see you next week. Although maybe we won't, because I'll be leaving for vacation. Well, I think we can probably still sneak in an episode. Let's do that. All right. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again next week.